Hello and welcome to Pisgah Health Today. My name is Angela Owen and it's my privilege to host this program brought to you by the Pisgah Health Foundation. The Pisgah Health Foundation is a public 501c3 charity founded in 2019 by a board of seven caring individuals committed to improving the health, wellness, and lives of Western North Carolina residents. Our special guest today is Laura Kirby, who comes to us as the Executive Director of Haywood Street Congregation. Welcome to our program today, Laura. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. We are delighted to have you with us. Laura's background is in social work and public health. She actually got her dual masters in those at UNC Chapel Hill. She is a deaconess in the United Methodist Church. She's been involved with the Haywood Street Congregation uh, from the beginning, actually began as a volunteer there, and then seven years ago became the executive director. Laura's been a member of the Asheville community for the last 18 years, and we are thrilled to have her here to talk to us today about the Haywood Street Congregation and specifically a program there, the Haywood Street Respite. So welcome again, Laura, and why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about the organization? Thanks, yeah, glad to be here. And like many of us during COVID, working at home, and sorry about my dogs barking in the background, but... Um, yeah, so Haywood Street Congregation, we actually have a lot of different things going on, but the probably the best place to start and the most important thing for people to know is our mission, which is relationship above all else. And so to follow that, we pursue our mission in the context of programs that help address the needs of people who are homeless or at risk for homelessness or um, struggling with challenges such as um, mental illness and addiction and, and many, um, many challenges like that. So our programs all sort of um, revolve around those issues and needs. But again, our central focus is on relationships. So that's, that's maybe the best way I can begin to describe the organization. I love that relationship above all else. Well, Laura, how, how's the grant from Pisgah Health Foundation? How will that specifically help you as you're achieving that mission of relationship above all else? So the grant from Pisgah Health Foundation is supporting the program called Haywood Street Respite. And what Respite is, is a place where um, adults who are unhoused can come and stay um, for a few weeks after being discharged from the hospital. Um, so you can, we all have family members or from time to time know someone who's been in the hospital. And um, as you know, when you leave the hospital, often you are not at your best and still pretty vulnerable. And there is a recent, an evidence-based model that, that um, called medical respite care, where folks who are coming out of the hospital and are unhoused, if there's a place where they can stay for two to three weeks, it can make a huge difference in their health outcomes and also in their housing outcomes and in other ways. Um, while they're at respite, they have a chance to, of course, finish getting well, but it's also an opportunity to not have to worry about where they're gonna sleep that night or where they're gonna eat and just get well, but also to be connected to services and supports that they might need in the community. So we're always making sure that whoever comes to stay with us is connected to a primary care provider, for example, and working to get them to their first follow-up appointment after being in the hospital. Um, we're also working to make sure that they're in the pipeline for housing if they're not already in that pipeline and trying to help make progress on any of the particular things that they might be working on um, related to their health and wellness. Um, so that is the program that Pisgah Health um, Foundation is supporting. And um, folks who stay with us um, generally have fewer hospital readmissions, um, better housing outcomes, and um, generally also report um, an improvement in their overall health status. So those are, those are some of the ways that y'all are helping. I picture this tremendous bridge as someone is coming out of the hospital and then they've got this safe place to land and you're creating all of those channels between helping them back with those other doctor visits and then helping them on the long go on the ongoing basis for, for housing. Wow, it's, that's incredible. Have you seen um, a change or an increase in any way this year as we've all kind of navigated COVID-19 and those impacts? 
Yeah, it's been an interesting year. Um, let me say too, as you were as you were talking about the bridge and and just sort of gave me a mental image of that. Um, also, I think what is so important, or I guess what characterizes our program the most, kind of based on what I was saying about the relationship, we try to have Haywood Street Respite be home for everyone in like a family environment. And so folks who come to stay with us, um, the, the sense from the beginning is for everyone to feel like they're part of the family there. Um, we have eight people staying with us at a time. And um, there's a lot of support that happens in that space. And then of course, support that extends as, as these new friends become part of our community friends is what we call people who come to stay with us. Um, so during COVID, we had, um, we did close for a few weeks and as we tried to figure out how we were going to navigate having people come and go constantly, um, you know, every few weeks. So what we ended up doing was connecting with, um, nine friends in the community who were unhoused and had particularly complex health problems. So it would leave them especially vulnerable to COVID. And some of these are friends who had stayed with us before during respite. And some are friends that were identified by our partners like Homeward Bound or um, some of the community healthcare providers that, that helped us know who was especially at risk. So we found those nine folks and moved them into respite and they stayed, we invited them. It was during the stay home and stay safe period. And so they were invited to come and stay home and stay safe there in respite for as long as was needed. So we had, we had a few months during COVID where we had, I think one friend stayed with us for maybe five months in total. Um, of those original nine people, some got housing during that time. And so we, we, they moved out and then we began bringing new people in um, as testing became more widely available in the community. We were able to have folks referred from the hospital, tested negative and come in. And that's kind of the this, this state we're in now so that we know that we can keep everyone there safe. We're bringing people in after a negative COVID test from the, with referral from our partner. Um, but eventually those nine all left and now we're kind of back to the same um, profile of having friends come and stay for a couple of weeks. And um, so just happy that we can be a place where people can be safe um, when there are the extra threats of COVID out there. Absolutely. You're really creating a transitional home. I love that you describe that, that they have a family, a home. Laura, what else would be important for our viewers to know about you and the organization? How can they get involved? How can they support the work that you're doing? Well, let's see. Um, normally, I would say come and visit and experience because a respite is just one thing. There's lots of different things happening at Haywood Street. And um, in keeping with our emphasis on relationship, our, our intention is that it's a community where people from all kinds of circumstances come together. I didn't mention our meal, but we do have a meal called the Downtown Welcome Table, which is really the hub of the whole ministry. And um, when we have that meal a couple of times a week and we have usually, well, it's Wednesday lunch and Sunday breakfast. And during normal times, the intention was for everyone to come and eat together. And so for Wednesday lunch, for example, we might have five or 600 people come and we would, we would take shifts. We would have a hundred people in our dining room at once and then, and then we'd trade out. But, um, it's not just people who don't know where their next meal is coming from. It's all of us to sit down and eat together. And, um, so normally I would say come and have a meal with us and get to know us. But during COVID, we are doing all of our meals outdoors um, to go format and um, obviously keeping the number of people on campus at a time small. So um, the best ways to connect with us now are just gonna be virtually until we can be back together. And so our website is haywoodstreet.org and we have a um, you know, a very active um, social media and online community. And in our website, there's lots of stories and um, ways for people to learn more about who we are and what we do. And um, we do still have a volunteer, uh, volunteer opportunities for folks who do want to get involved with either preparing the meal, um, boxing it up and distributing it, or in our clothing ministry, we, um, we have folks who come in and help organize um, all the donations and 
we're using a personal shopper format right now to make clothes and um, warm weather gear available to our friends um, on the streets. Um, we also have a community garden when the weather's nice, so plenty of opportunities. And I would just encourage people to um, to to start with our website to learn more and and uh, connect as as they feel comfortable and able to do. Lots of ways to stay engaged even in these crazy times, and we all look forward to the time when we'll be able to safely gather around that downtown welcome table. I love that picture. Laura, thank you so very much for uh, taking time to be with us today and on behalf of the Board of Directors at Pisgah Health Foundation. Thank you to you and the rest of those, uh, the staff and the volunteers who were doing so much through Haywood Street to um, build those relationships and do relationship above all else. And we greatly thank appreciate you. all the work you're doing. We're very grateful for your support and all that you're doing in the community and the region. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you today, Laura. We also wanna thank Wildflower Media for their creative and technical support and bringing these programs to you, our viewers. We also wanna say thank you to the board of directors and the staff at Pisgah Health Foundation and to the Physicians Roundtable. Until we see you on the next Pisgah Health Today, stay well and be well. Thanks, Laura.